Ladies, it's your time to shine with all things fabulous with First for Women on Afternoon Express. For insurance with a host of fabulous benefits, call 0861 11 1844 or SMS FIRST to 49267. Today on Afternoon Express, we tantalize your taste buds using Italian cheese. Model Rosette's Moana talks about married life. The Hevel's Fantastis perform for us right here in the loft. Fashion designer Stefan Martin showcases his latest line. Hairstylist Sean Adams gives us some easy tips on how to recreate that runway look for ourselves. And we get the ins and outs of the child modeling industry with model agent Sean Close. Welcome back to Afternoon Express right here on SABC3. Thank you so much for joining us and inviting us back into your TV rooms. I'm Ponang Mateba. Another hour of inspiration and fashion is coming up your way. Fashion because South African fashion designer Stefan Martin is here to tell us about his brand new collection. And what's a fashion industry without beautiful models? Yes, Rosette Nguana is in the house and she's going to be telling us all about the ins and outs of the modeling industry and of course her beautiful wedding which she celebrated a couple of weekends ago. The year Fantasties are also in the loft and going to be performing for you a little bit later. Interact with us at Afternoon Chat using our official hashtag Afternoon Express. We do love hearing from you. But what's the show without some delicious food? Bonnie, what's happening in the kitchen? Thank you, Bonang. It's a pleasure to welcome you back to the Afternoon Express Kitchen. I'm Bonnie Booley and joining me today is product developer Susie O'Regan. And today we're taking a vegetable that most people never know what to do with cauliflower and we're roasting it yes. and mixing it up with a twist. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've decided today to take cauliflower and beetroot, lovely earthy beetroot and cauliflower, and make a, um, a bit of a twist on a traditional melanzane and using three really delicious Italian cheeses. Awesome, sounds amazing. We'll be back, but for now, let's join Bonang with our first guest. Founded in 2008 by Cape Town-based musicians Pierre Greef and Hunter Kennedy, the Hevels Fantastis combine the contrasting sounds of acoustic instruments and electronic production with powerful Afrikaans lyrics to form one of South Africa's premier musical acts. Yeah, so will we... Look for a name, we just wanted something that's approachable, friendly, fun, didn't mean much really. Uh, myself and Hunter, we sat, had a couple of margaritas there in the Durbanville Hills and yeah, we came up with a name. So I, I, I guess it's inspired by where we grew up. Revered for their unique sound and energetic live performances, the Hevels Fantastis have played at all the major festivals in South Africa and earned the opportunity to open for the Kings of Leon in 2012. Shortly after Varsity, myself and Hunter, we moved back to, to Balbal, stayed with our parents, uh, had a lot of time on our hands, no real jobs yet, that kind of thing. Ended up writing songs together because his band uh, was on hiatus and, and mine too. So. Um, yeah, I guess it just came out from being bored in the suburbs. Uh, at that stage, Fred wasn't in the band. We did the first album, just uh, myself, Hunter and Johnny. And then when, because Fred is a bit younger than us, when he kind of finished up with Vasti and those things, his band also took kind of a break and we wrapped them in. I've always been a fan of his work. With four studio albums released over their seven-year career, the latest of which features the title track of the hit Afrikaans film Ballade Fera Enkelen, it's clear that the Hevels Fantastis have stamped their mark on the South African music scene. We are back in the lounge right here in the loft and very excited to have our first guests with us right here on Afternoon Express. They've been hailed as the pioneers of Afrikaans electronic music with four albums behind them. They've literally performed at every single festival you can think of. And since their inception in 2008, there's just gone bigger and stronger and more successful. And what an honor to have uh, the Evil's Fantasies in the lounge today. Welcome to Afternoon Express. Thanks, Lovely to meet each and every one of you. I'm going to start, I mean, last 
last year, just in time for Christmas, you launched um, your brand new album. How was the reception around that Christmas time and everybody shopping? And yeah, <laughs> uh, we just got it into stores in time. We were actually a little bit late for the rush. But yeah, uh, yeah uh, I think our core fans got to buy it in time for Christmas. Uh, yeah, it's gone really well. Um, one of the singles we did for a film has mm. kind of blown up. Uh, it's gotten a lot of views on YouTube, more than most of our other videos had gotten in a month or whatever. Um, so yeah, good, Let, Let's good actually talk off. about that movie, uh, Ballade for an Inkling, and mm. the song that you created. And you, we, you were saying that it, it, it struck just such a nostalgic chord with a lot of people. Let's talk about the creative process when you were given the brief to yeah. create the song. Yeah, so it's a cover of a, of a song that used to exist as the theme song for the TV show. And um, yeah, Fred actually produced it, our guitar ah, player. Uh -huh. um, so we just tried to flip it a bit. The original is quite um, happy, uplifting, and I think ours is a bit more, I don't know, moody. You know, in previous movies, they just took, you know, music from your album. This time around, you had to create a song from, you know, the beginning and produce it. Yeah. What, how did you start? Where did you begin? Were you nervous this time around? Um, yeah, it was quite cool. The director phoned us and he told, sort of explained the last scene of the movie and he told us exactly where the song's going to start playing and that. So it was quite a nice brief to have to work from. And yeah, we just sort of flipped the song on its head. And what do you think it is about this particular song that your fans absolutely yeah, love? I just think that TV show was huge back in the 80s. Mm. Um, and, you know, obviously the theme song per se then as well. So I think people hadn't heard the song maybe for a while and then all of a sudden hearing it in a different way or whatever, you know. It kind of happens, I think, every once in a while, every generational gap, you know, songs get reworked and rehashed. You know, like sampling or whatever it happens yeah. all the time. So that, you know, take old ideas and make them new. So, yeah, I guess that's what happened. I mean, and taking ideas and making them new is something, you know, that we, that we see a lot in electronic music. And for, uh, for you as a group to be hailed as the first successful Afrikaans electronic, you know, band, yeah. I mean, the electronic sound is very English. Why the direction to kind of fuse it with an Afrikaans language? I don't know, Sheldon? <laughs> Sheldon, can you explain that for us? Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I very recently joined the group. Uh, yeah. That was actually a joke. <laughs> uh, but um, I guess for us, when we, all the bands we used to play in was just straightforward kind of guitars, drums, bass. Mm. Um, and with this project, I, I just think we wanted to make something that's a bit more open, you know, we can do whatever we want and kind of using the studio as an instrument, not as such electronics or whatever, mm. um, that kind of opens up a whole new world. And we always just try and serve the song and like try and deal with it. If it's just an acoustic guitar and a voice, that's good. If yeah. the song only wants that, but yeah. So with that said, then obviously it means you're able to create all types of music and all types of genres. Would you see yourself moving into other spheres of, you know, how music sounds and what kind of music you'd create? Uh, I think you should ask Fred that. Fred? He's you're to the make, producer, he's, you he's put it all producer, together. Man, yeah. Have you ever had dreams of making like, let's say, a gospel album? We wanted to make a, um, a funky grunge album once. Uh huh. But that never happened. Yeah, so what's next? Any ideas for now? <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll just see how it goes day by day. <laughs> but that's my next question. You know, what is uh, the, the next thing for you? World domination? I mean, you've done DVDs, you've got the festivals, you've got the albums, yeah, you've got the Daniel, success. Daniel from here, really. Ah, please. <laughs> what is next for the Europa uh, Fantastic? I think for us, it's just trying to make music that we kind of like. Um, and then if other people respond to it, that's cool, you know. Um, mm. At the end of the day, I think all of us started making music because it's fun and something we enjoy. And if it can stay that way, then we'll keep on doing it. Thank you so much for coming through. What an honor to have the Oval Fantastics right here in the lounge. Don't go anywhere after the break. We've got South African model and a lady that just, just tied the knot with successful businessman Lungangwana. Rosette is right here on Afternoon Express. Don't move. South Africa, are you with us? South African model Rosette Nwana, or Roro as she's affectionately known, has featured in magazines and advertising campaigns around the world. 
From international swimwear shoots to TV commercials, her character and style have earned her respect across the globe and romance here at home. We met three years ago at a restaurant in Cape Town through mutual friends. But on that day, I was invited by friends to come just join them for lunch. And I was at a shoot. It took forever. And I finally wrapped up and everything was done. And I went to where they were. But I didn't know he was there. By the time I got there, he was already leaving because he's been there forever and he was rushing off somewhere else. So we briefly met and he was gone. And I was like, oh my goodness, who was that? She's a very attractive girl, as you can see. So for me, I said, I said to the friend, wow, who is this girl? And I said, so can we have lunch with her tomorrow? So look, she's a very stunning, beautiful girl. So that's what struck me in my mind at that particular time. Rosette and Lunga tied the knot in March this year at an estate in the Cape Winelands with 250 guests, including celebrities, family and friends, as witness to their happiness. He's selfless, that's what I love. And he's so generous to everyone that's around him, which to me is something quite important. She's a very caring and loving person. Rosette makes friends. She goes to a, a shop or a store and she'll make friends with anybody. And uh, the following day, you'll hear she's having lunch with somebody she met yesterday. So that's the kind of person she is. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome the beautiful, the talented, the gorgeous, Rosette Ngona. Welcome to Afternoon Express. Those boots were made for walking. And that's just... <laughs> You look absolutely incredible. Thank you so much. Is, is it the marriage glow? Is it? I've always been glowing. Of course. Mm. Marriage or not. <laughs> yeah, right from the beginning of your career. And that's what I want to know, you know, as a model. Where did the love start? Were you discovered, you know, like Naomi Campbell walking down the street? Did you go to an agency? How did your story begin? I don't have a portfolio. Mm. I didn't even think I was going to actually start modeling. Wow. I took a break just after matriculating and I figured, hey, I don't know what I want to do. So why not then just try to get some pocket money, work at a coffee shop, and then see how things work out. And while I was at the coffee shop, a lot of customers that came in kept asking if I was modeling. And I was like, no, I'm not a model, but I just work here. I mean, nothing uh -huh. more. Okay. And I figured if every day is like this, all these comments, maybe I'm missing something here. Yeah. I should actually try it out. And I remember one of my neighbors was a model and she had a casting. I was like, listen here, I'm going with you. And when I got there, the lady that was casting actually asked me to come cast as well. I was like, oh yeah, great, I would love to. I don't know what this is about, but I'll go in. Yeah. And I did. And, and like they say, I got that job. Yeah. Like, oh wow, and I'm, then... I'm a freelancer. <laughs> <laughs> what, do I speak about? what do I speak to you about my money and all of that? But eventually then I went in and joined her agency. And from then on, it was just one thing at a time and started booking the jobs internationally, locally. Yes. And I did well. But that's, you know, my next question to you. I mean, you've done so much, traveled the world, featured on magazines and the most beautiful spreads, you know, that we've seen in South Africa. Is there a highlight, a particular moment in your career where you felt, okay, no, this is it? Or a, a project that you loved working on that was your favorite? There's been a couple. I mean, the ones I loved the most were the trips to the tropical islands yes. to shoot the swimsuits. Uh -huh. Those were the best because we literally do nothing for the entire week and you shoot literally just a day and the rest of the time is just chilling, you know, sit by the beach, do whatever you want uh -huh. until that certain day comes. And when it, that happens, it's so quick. It's like one, two, two hours, you're done. Yeah. And those were the best times of traveling, the best times of going to shoot away. It was brilliant. And I mean, I've spoken to brides all, every single day, interviewing brides, and they also say that your wedding day feels like, that's just it, it you know, <laughs> moves in a flash. How was your wedding day? I mean, the Cape Winelands. I mean, I watched it on Top Billing. I yes. followed it on Instagram. It really was, I think, the social event of the year. Mine didn't move that fast. Really? Yeah, I made sure I took it all, <laughs> all in. in, slowly even. Because yes. I remember when the car pulled up to the aisle, I said, no, let me be for a while. When I'm ready, I'll walk. And there was my coordinator going, Rosette, please come out. Just come out and walk. I was like, no, I'm not walking. And said, wait, 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 wait for it. It will come. And there I was. And I, every single step of wow. that, I literally took my time. I absorbed it all in. And it was such a beautiful wedding. I loved every bit of it. It was, I mean, it's... the planning into it was so stressful. 
but eventually the results were amazing. I mean, stressful, obviously, because you, you have such a busy schedule, but also because you want everything to be perfect. Yeah. But I know there's a very special, um, uh, what is it, like a story behind your wedding gown and the fact that you had modelled it yes. or wore it two years before your actual wedding day. Mm -hmm. Did you know? I mean, I <laughs> how forced, did you remember? This is actually the first time I've forced and started showing at wedding, wedding um, expo. Yes. And I was like, oh my gosh, okay. And I was assigned for the dress and I put it on. I even said to my friend that was at the wedding expo, listen, this dress here, I want to take a picture in it. And I swear, when I do get married, whenever this is, will be, I want to do wear this dress. And you did. And I did. And it waited for you yeah. for two years. I mean, it was there. And when I called him up, I was like, listen, remember what I said to you? He's like, I thought you were joking. Wow. I was like, no, I was dead serious. Fantastic. And then I went in, did the measurements, had my dress done. It was amazing. But what was the most amazing moment of that day, your wedding day? Oh my goodness, it's so difficult to actually pinpoint which exactly. But when I was walking down the aisle, mm. my daughter came running. Oh, okay. I was like, oh, yeah, oh baby. <laughs> yeah, I know. What a moment. <laughs> I was like, oh. So then she says to me, Mommy, I want to walk with you. Aww. I was like, And she was okay. also in a white little yes. dress. She was like, okay, let's walk together. I mean, she loves attention. So that moment there was just for her. She was like, yes. So if she wanted to get into modeling like mom or follow dad and be a businesswoman, what, what do you, which one do you it. think? She's, she? Yeah, she's done two campaigns already. She's in there, girl. <laughs> Amazing. But I mean, with such a busy family, I mean, you know, Gabriella doing modeling like mom. Yes. And then your husband is a very successful businessman. How do you then balance business, we, we, Gabby, you, work, yes. life? We actually find a balance somehow. We some way, somehow find a way to get back to each other. I don't know how it works, but right now as well, we just moved to Cape Town. So we mm. just relocated from Johannesburg and we're trying to get settled in and having Gabby and then this and then the house and all of those elements coming all together. It's like, they're just falling into place. I don't know how, but yes. they're just happening, okay? I'm like, it's, great, it's I'm thankful for all of it that it's just happening the way it is. So successful career, you know, a beautiful family, a beautiful wedding. What is next for you? Now that you've settled down, you're in Cape Town, you've had the wedding of your dreams, what would you still like to achieve? I want to actually take it slow, maybe for the rest of the year, mm. and then see what then happens as I'm relaxing and taking my time and going through my thoughts. There's a few things that I have my eyes on and what I could do here in Cape Town. Okay. So Still modelling? Yes, yeah, still modelling. But then again, Cape Town run about the season. Winter season, it's quiet. Mm. I mean, everybody hibernates. No one yeah. works. So once then that starts picking up, then obviously then we'll start working again. But for now, I'm so, like, I'll hibernate with the rest of yeah, the Yeah, you want to enjoy all your wedding gifts. <laughs> yeah. Take that all that moment. I <laughs> know. Oh, with the wedding gifts, we didn't get <laughs> gifts for ourselves. We got gifts for charity. So oh, we got clothes beautiful. and toys and all those things to give away to churches and to schools and stuff like that. So I didn't get any gifts. Do you want a gift? I mean, you, I mean, you can have this laugh. You and your husband can come move in here. <laughs> but Rosa, thank you so much for coming. I mean, we are going to keep following you. We absolutely love you on ACDC3. Thank you for coming into our loft. Do you love it? It's amazing. It's amazing. I was actually right? saying that the decor here, it's... I mean, um, we, we come in here every day. I'm going to create a room like this in my house. And we'll be there to film it and make sure that we capture it. Thank you great so much for coming stuff. through. Thank All you. right, make sure that you don't go anyway. Rosette is still going to be in the loft with us to enjoy the rest of the show like you at home. Tweet us right now at Afternoon Chat, hashtag Afternoon Express, and let us know what you thought of our gorgeous guest today. But moving on to the kitchen with Bonnie. Thank you, B. So, Susie and I are about to get stuck into the first part of our recipe. We're making roast cauliflower. I'm so excited to know what else to do with cauliflower apart from just the proverbial white sauce on top of boiled cauliflower. Okay, cool. So Bonnie, what's our first step? It's as easy as anything. Basically take a head of a couple of heads of cauliflower mm -hmm. and break them off into okay. florets. So maybe okay. you could um, help me here sure. a little bit. I've washed my hands especially. <laughs> Okay, so while I do this, please tell me about the star of this dish, okay. which are all those Italian cheeses. Absolutely. So um, at Woolworths, we have two or three really beautiful imported Italian hard cheeses. Mm -hmm. I've particularly selected today the Parmigiano Reggiano. Okay. Um, it's matured for 24 months. It's made in northern Italy, and it has the most incredible sweet, nutty flavors that come wow. through very strongly mm -hmm. in the recipe. Um, I think the most um, important thing to look out for when you're looking at Italian cheeses is right. the little stamp of 
basically authentication. It wow. just basically says that it's been made to an authentic recipe traditionally in Northern Italy. Um, so we have Parmigiano Reggiano, Grana mm -hmm. Padano and Pecorino Romano that are all imported. So once you've broken up the florets, We'll just give it a little bit all of, of them. Would you like no, all I of think them? that's probably that's enough about then. it. Right. So we give it a bit of a slag of olive oil, mm -hmm. and then a pinch of chili flakes. Chili flakes. Okay. A bit more. Just give it a little bit of a bite. Um, some ar dried oregano. Right. Again, a bit of a pinch of that. Awesome. And are the cheeses selected specifically for their flavours? Um, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we. Uh, import a range of uh, mm -hmm. cheeses that are authentic um, that we know South Africans would love to eat. Right. Uh, Pecorino Romano is made with sheep's milk, so it's very um, salty yes, and got quite yes. an authentic, tr um, very typical taste. Mm -hmm. um, I love using Pecorino Romano in a pasta with um, broccoli yes. and just lots of grated Pecorino Romano and wow. that lovely salty flavour comes through. Gorgonzola, of course, is absolutely delicious. Oh, it's gorgonzola. rich and creamy yeah, and that yes. lovely spicy note. Again, um, everybody knows gnocchi with a gorgonzola and then served with walnuts and maybe some basil on top. So yeah, we have a fantastic range. Um, in this dish, let's mm. just mix it up a little okay, bit. Okay, we need to mix that up. Oopsie, maybe a little bit more olive oil. Let's just put that if on. you're cooking along with us at home, go to our website www.afternoonexpress.co.za for the full recipe and shopping list. Okay, that should be okay. And okay, we're popping just, that in the oven. Absolutely. So let's just tip this onto a baking tray. Okay, sure. Anything to put on the baking tray no, so it doesn't stick? I think stick? there's okay. um, enough olive oil in here to, right. to do it. And then we'll just pop that in the oven for about half an hour. Okay. at 180 degrees until it just goes nice and golden and, and a little bit crispy. I'm really looking forward to see how it turns out, Susie. We'll be back in the kitchen later, but when we return, don't go away because we'll be talking fashion with renowned designer Stephen Martin. Fashion designer Stefan Martin has established his name as a hot young talent with his clothing label Ilan. Inspired by his passion for art, Ilan makes use of bold prints and simplistic shapes to create beautiful clothing. We try to portray femininity in the soft flowy fabrics that we're doing and then also the prints that we did was prints that we painted ourselves and then we enlarged it and made it bigger and smaller and then we printed on unexpected fabrics. Having excelled in both art and photography, Stefan brings his own unique angle to the world of fashion and aims to create designer clothing that is accessible to women of all shapes and ages. I usually try to think out of the box and when I do my pattern construction with that, I usually think of very constructive lines, but with the floaty fabric that I usually use, that actually deconstruct the whole style so you get that floppiness and like the weird draping parts that's still soft and wearable, but something different. Now the South African design scene is booming and is gaining desirability both locally and internationally by the day. And amidst this crop of talent is fashion designer Stefan Martin from clothing label Ilan and he's joining us now on the couch. Welcome to The Loft. Thanks for having me. Cool. So let's start at the beginning. How did you get into design? Um, I actually started, if I must think back, uh, where I actually took one of my granny's dresses uh, secretly and then um, I actually cut it up and decided uh -huh. it's not what I wanted to be. How old uh, were you? Six. Okay. Yes, six. <laughs> so you can imagine Granny's favorite dress and I'm running around and cutting it up with a pair of scissors. <laughs> yeah. She wasn't really happy at all. I'm sure I wouldn't. Yeah, needless to say. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, and then basically all, um, I was inspired at a very young age by arts, mm -hmm. um, even though uh, fashion is a really commercial take on art. It's fast moving and that stimulates my creativity a lot. Yeah. And after I actually spoke to one of my mentors um, and encouraged me to actually do fashion, right. I started studying fashion and the rest is history. Well done, because it's not the easiest industry to get into. No, not really at all. Yeah. So how do you see the world as a designer? I mean, do you ever switch that part of you off or are you constantly on the lookout for inspiration? That part? Never, switch Never switches off, off Never. huh? Never. I bet you you dream in design. Yes, and <laughs> especially on Sunday evenings before the week actually starts. 
that you have to think of everything that has to happen and you have to run here and run there nice. and do this and do that and patterns to be made and fabric and all of that stuff. Speaking of which, you've got your spring summer collection and some models who are wearing it. Please take us through it. Yes. Woo, wow. Look at that. What what inspired that? Yeah, so we had to Babylon store in one of um, the small little uh, organic farms oh, in yeah. Franschhoek as been to our Babylon inspiration. Yeah. It's beautiful, yeah, yes. yeah. So we took that and uh -huh. their beliefs and simplicity mm -hmm. and took that as inspiration right. and worked around that. And what is, when you look at that, what, what came to mind? I mean, do you have a muse or a particular woman in mind when you design? No, I don't have oh. a muse at all. I work according to what I actually every day see. Okay. And a lot of women inspire me right from when I was a small child right up till now. So I take that and then from that I use like inspiration from how they grew up or like their personal stories. Personal stories and personality as well. Right. Take us through this design. That was actually my finale at the oh, end. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, we did all the hand woven flowers that's wow. on there, it's silk uh, flowers, and I think we did about 350 of them, oh, roughly. Gosh, by hand? Yes, by hand, wow. watching TV while, oh. <laughs> while I was doing that, yes. And then we sewn that on a few pieces in the collection. It's absolutely gorgeous. So it's like a relaxed boho wedding yes, dress. Yes, yes. Right, and your next one? Oh, that's interesting. Yes, the um, the rain it's like a rain cut at the top. Mm -hmm. um, it's specialized fabric that we actually had laminated. So it gives like that um, glossy uh, lurex feeling okay. to it. Okay. And then at the bottom is one of our prints that we did. It's actually artichokes that we did drawings of and then enlarged artichokes. it. Artichokes, yes. yeah. And that's also one of the things that they have on Babylon Stewart yes, as well, in the menu. garden, yes. Yeah, yeah, as well, yeah. And that was basically my main inspiration for the collection, is the, the botany of um, the garden. Yes. And then the structural lines and all of those things then soften. I can totally see why that inspired you. It's an absolutely beautiful place. Yeah, and when you go to Babylon Sturin, you know, you leave there and then it will stay with you for about a week oh, yeah. or so. And I then you want to go back again you afterwards. Go back. Yes. yes, it's so whimsical and romantic. Yes. So what positive challenges have you experienced in the design world? Well, there's lots of positive ones and negative ones, yes. but <laughs> the positive ones, I think, is that the industry um, for South African designers uh -huh. have grown a lot. We are being seen in internationally, are also being um, exported. Yeah. A few of us, I mean, it's not all of us, mm -hmm. but there's quite a few that is being recognized and then that's being exported. So it helps all the other local designers yeah. to bring on a certain level of craftsmanship so that we can qualify to deal with international designers right. as well. Yes. What do you think gives us the edge? I think that we're innovators. Yes that um, when we have problems that we can quickly solve that mm -hmm. and then actually the problems at the end of the day is the biggest success because the quick changes right. that you do is the ones that last the longest. Right. I mean, when I do collections like my ready to wear collections as well, mm -hmm. it's usually like the last piece that I did quickly that is the best seller. Yeah, it's always, funny. always, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Bonang is ready now with the same gorgeous models showing us how to get that ultra feminine updo worn up by our models. Expert hairstylist Sean Adams joins her. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Mr. Martin, I know exactly what I'm going to be wearing next from your collection, but I loved one of these hair looks so much that I got a celebrity hairstylist to the stars, Mr. Sean Adams, <laughs> to help us recreate one of the looks that I saw on the models. Sean, lovely to have you. For a Hello, lady that has a couple of seconds, you know, you're in the morning to put this beautiful look together, I'm going to allow you to, you know, talk us through it. Cool. I'm going to ask my model to turn her head to camera. Turn mm -hmm. around for me quickly. Yeah. What I've done here is I've made three ponytails, just on her hair, and I've backcombed the ends of the three ponytails. Okay. I've made two sections on the side, uh -huh. and I've kept the top section. All right. So what I'm going to do here is catch this hair in my hand and make a bola. A bola, which is a lovely little bola, then you pin, pin, pin. Ball of fluffy hair, and you <laughs> pin across, 
and you pin across. Now, I'm doing a simplified version of the hairstyle I did on the model with the red hair, who uh -huh. has the one, the hairstyle with braids. I saw that. This so that can be done. If you have the time and the inclination, you can do it with braids, but if you're in a hurry, you can do this version of it, which mm. is the same concept, yes. but a different version of the style, and it works great either way. Oh, but you know, Sean, you know, hairstylists always say you have three minutes. You make it look so but easy, I'm but actually... if I try to do it, I'll be oh, like... Oh, girlfriend, <laughs> I'm doing it in real time. Okay, lovely. So, there's the back done. Oh! Bit of hairspray. Yes. Now, you take the top section, because the trick here is to hide all the seams. So, really, very simple. Quick bit of spray, smooth with your hand, tuck it in there. Oh, that is sensational. One hair grip, you can leave that end. Take this section. Spray, spray, quick spray. Bit of spray, spray, spray. You make it look so easy. It honestly. is that easy, Bono. <laughs> All right. Grip in. And this is real time, mind you. If you're watching this, this is real time. This is how long it will take you in the morning should you want to recreate. Well, this other than the stuff. three little ponytails. Yeah. But other than that, this is it. We are done. We are really done. Walk. That was that was not even five minutes, Sean. Ladies, one trick here. Please hide your hairpins. <laughs> you don't want to see a hair... Okay, well, no, no. I don't yeah. hide my hairpins. I think my model's ready. Look at that. A cool. fantastic red carpet look in a flash. Now I know Three why minutes. the celebs love you so much. So I'm going to ask you, which celebrity has been your favourite to work with? Well, I've been working with Joanne Strauss for a good few years yes. now. And, like, you know, you have your guy, yes. I'm her guy. Uh -huh. and it just makes sense when you get to know somebody, you get to know their hair, and you get to work with them, you get to understand how they work Absolutely. and how they want to look. That's yeah. very important to understand how the person wants, wants to, to look, look, not what you, you want to do to them. I love it. Other than when you get a brief from a director, then you do what you're told to do. And now that you say Joanne Strauss, she's very synonymous with the sleek back, back and big, big pony bun. at the back. Yeah. yeah. All right, Sean. Okay, yeah. Sean. Cool. I see you. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you so much. Only a pleasure. Lovely to have you. So, ladies, there it is. <clears throat> it did not even take five minutes to recreate that amazing runway look, courtesy of Sean Adams. Don't go anywhere. More coming up after the break right here on Afternoon Express. My name is David Lissedi. It takes me a very long time to get home from work. So I miss the thing that really matters to me every day. But today, thanks to NetBank, my dream has come true. You too can make the things that really matter happen. Simply open and use a NetBank account, tell us your dream, and you could win it. Welcome back to Afternoon Express on SABC3. Now, we see children in magazine and television adverts on a daily basis, but we actually don't know what goes into child modeling. And joining us today is Sean Close from Topco to tell us what it's actually like for a child in the modeling industry. And she's brought with her some adorable guests. Welcome to the show, Sean. Thank you for having me. So, Sean, when I think of child modeling, I immediately think child pageants, honey boo boo, but <laughs> I know it's not all about that. Not Please take all. us into the world of child modeling. Well, you know, there's different types of modeling. Um, you get catalog modeling and TV commercials. Um, it's not really about pageants at all. Um, you know, the kids that work are actually like all shapes and sizes, all ages as well. Um, you know, it's not that stereotypical chocolate box kids that just work. Um, yeah, like I said, all quirky kids and it's, it's mainly just about really outgoing kids that are actually really working now. From how young do children actually start modeling? Newborns. Wow. Yeah, we actually had a brief today. They're looking for zero to three months. So they shoot newborn babies as well. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Now, every mother thinks that their child is adorable and has mm. what it takes to become a child model. Yeah. But what does it actually take? 
You know what? Um, ah, it's just, like I said, there's just so many different kids that work. Uh -huh. So it's actually just, if kids, I'd say if a child is really outgoing, right. um, you know, they've got a really fun personality and they're good around people that they don't really know very well, mm -hmm. they'll work. Um, so it's just about, you and know. they can take instructions. Yeah, if they can take instructions, I think that's right. the most important thing. Um, so yeah, the parents can just apply for them online. Most agencies have websites, so they can just apply online. Um, sometimes we even scout kids. Yeah. Um, you know, well, maybe Where? Uh, anyway, um, I brought, um, we, I've actually found kids at shopping malls and wow, restaurants yeah. and yeah. At Spur? <laughs> Not Spur, but even if you're like walking in Canal Walk, you normally find really beautiful kids yeah, just walking around. around yeah. yeah. Now, Sean, you've brought with you some gorgeous, adorable child yes. models. We can't wait to meet them. Yeah. Hayley and Oliver. Lissala, you look gorgeous with them. Hello, guys. How are you doing? Fine. Hi. Come over, come over. It's so lovely to meet you. <laughs> and you're brother and sister, aren't you? Yes. How old are you? Six. I'm seven. You're seven. So, do you love modeling? Yes. What do you love most about it? Fun. <laughs> Fun. And yourself? I like meeting new people and uh -huh. meet trying on clothes. Oh, I love that too. <laughs> so, how did you find Oliver and Hayley? Uh, my colleague, she was actually out for dinner and she spotted them at a restaurant. Uh -huh. And she called them over, gave um, their mom a card and said, you know, come in and see us. And she came in to see us and they signed up and they actually worked immediately. Oh, yeah, they're amazing. one of our superstar kids. So. I can totally see why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they've done really, really well. What are some of the dramas and meltdowns perhaps that you've faced with mothers and child models? Not so much the mothers. You know, the mothers are actually quite easy to deal yes, with. And we've yes. got some wonderful moms and dads on our books. And it's, it's a pleasure working with mm -hmm. them, really. Mm -hmm. um, we've had a few instances with drama on set with kids. Um, you know, examples. Oh, okay. Um, we had a child booked on a photo shoot and they actually wanted kids that could swim. Okay. And the mother said, yeah, no, he's been for swimming lessons. Um, and when he got to set, then, um, you know, the director's like, one, two, three, jump into the pool. Mm -hmm. Everyone jumped and he didn't come up. Oh, wow. So it was kind of like, where oh is my the, gosh. Yeah, where is he? And um, the director's like looking, he's like counting. Yeah. And then he had to like yank him out of the water. And oh um, he couldn't swim. Oh, and you, nobody so, knew he couldn't swim. No, but the thing was that the mom told us he could swim. So oh. that was a little bit of a situation. Oh. Um, but yeah, no, it was fine. He was okay. Right. Um, but yeah, that was a bit of a drama. I'm not going to lie. Which brings me to my next question. Yeah. I started out in the industry very young. And yeah. I remember being on set was very daunting to me, uh -huh. for me. So how important is it for a parents to be very supportive of their child when they're modeling? It, it, parents play a very important mm -hmm. role because, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's nerve wracking for the kids as well. And it's, it's good for the parents to just motivate them yes. and also just make them realize that, you know, they're not going to book everything. Um, yeah. And they need to be supportive that even if they don't book it, that, you know, that they went to the casting and they gave it them all. They yes. all yeah. And how do you let a parent down? when you're letting them know that their child doesn't have what it takes to be a model? Um, you know what, personally, we take on all kids zero to 14 years. Uh -huh. um, so we don't really decline them just because the clients look for all sorts of all kids. Sorts, yes, so it's kind of, know. they want the quirky kids as well. Uh -huh. um, but you know, if a child is a little bit older, like maybe 15, yeah. um, and he or she's a little bit too tall, then we'll normally say wait a few years okay. until you are a little bit older. So awesome. That's how we bring it up. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. Lovely to meet you. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Okay, let's join Bonang in the kitchen and see how our cauliflower is coming along. Thank you so much, buddy. We are back in the kitchen as we continue to make our delicious meal today. Uh, beetroot and cauliflower baked. Susie, so what is, you know, the next step okay. for the recipe? So once you've cooked your cauliflower and it's lovely and tender and soft, mm -hmm. take it and pop it into a mixer and give it a good blitz until right. it's nice and um, fine textured and I creamy. See. What I've done is I've also added some mascarpone. Mascarpone is 
rich and creamy and thick and really decadent. That looks divine. Um, and it really is, it gives such an amazing texture to any dish, whether it's a savory dish, a pasta sauce, or even in a dessert. I mean, That's, everybody knows Yeah, Yeah, yeah. So, what are the cheeses? Are there any soft Italian cheeses that you could substitute maybe mascarpone with add, I don't know, mozzarella? No, not really. The mascarpone is just thick and creamy and gotcha. rich and just absolutely ideal. We do have two or three other um, Italian cheeses. There's a bocconcini, which is literally a bite-sized mozzarella. It's just lovely and fresh mm. and light and Yum. ideal for salads, salads and things. And even um, torn and spread onto a margarita pizza or something and can just melt away. Okay. Um, there's ricotta, which everybody knows, just fine granular texture, nice and moist and used in a filled pasta or cannelloni or something like that. Okay. And then of course I've used um, grated pizza mozzarella to put on top on of the top. dish. On top. So what do we do first? Do we... If you can put a layer of beetroot for me, um, uh -huh. I've basically taken two bags of beetroot and I've cooked them until they're nice and soft. Uh -huh. Remember to actually peel them after they're cooked. They're just so much easier to, to, handle. to peel and handle. Handle. Yeah. And once we've done a layer of that. How thick do you want the layer to be? I guess it's up to me, right? You're doing a great job, yeah. Okay, That's fantastic. That's absolutely amazing. And then, fantastic, thank you. Mm, there we go. Um, what Just we'll make sure do is we will put a layer of our cauliflower with the mascarpone. And if you don't want to use cauliflower, can you use any other... Vegetable? I think just at the moment, you probably could, but I think just at the moment, cauliflower is just so on trend in that it's not a carb. <laughs> we know all about the car free diet. Yes, so, trending all over the world. Exactly. So let's just layer that on. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll do another layer of beetroot. On top of that. Yeah. And so you go. And so you go. And so then you just, just build it and build it and build it. it. And then um, what we do you, next. You know what I want to ask you, Susie, is how you get beetroot off your fingers and off your skin after you've handled <laughs> it's it. It's difficult, to be honest with you. You just scrub, scrub, scrub. I think, yeah, effectively just trying to avoid <laughs> touching the beetroot and these spoons as we're doing now. All right, um, there we that's go. That's great. Thank you, Banana. And then mm. after that, what we'll do is, um, sorry, let's do some... Cheese first. Mozzarella cheese that's just been grated. That's um, made, mozzarella. you know, preparing meals so easy. It's amazing. And, and then what is some that? breadcrumbs just to... Um, finish it off from the also top. Also ready and convenient. All ready and convenient for you. A bit more. And then some Parmigiano Reggiano. Um, so as much cheese as, as possible. You can. All the cheese in the world. Just cheese it cheese, up. Cheese, cheese, cheese. Okay. And this Parmigiano Reggiano is just so delicious. It's sweet and nutty and adds the most amazing flavour. So I'm going to go a bit mad with it here. Just and then how long does it stay in the oven for? This you'll cook for about um, 45 minutes okay. on 180 degrees until Lovely. it just gets golden and, and crisp on the top. And we're going to add a little bit of salt. And no olive oil needed, nothing, because no. obviously we did the that cheese. With, yeah. okay. And we also added olive oil at the very beginning to the cauliflower, if you remember. All right, well, there you go. So there we go. All ready to go. Done. So if you want to see the finished product, make sure you don't go anywhere. Of course, for the recipe and the ingredients, log on to our website, www.afternoonexpress.co.za. I can't wait to see how this is going to turn out. So while I pop this in the oven, make sure you don't go anywhere. So much more coming up right here after the break. Does anyone help me? Yes. <laughs> Welcome back to Afternoon Express. We did promise you an amazing performance for the Yevo Fantasies, and they are standing by in the last performing Ballada for an Inkeling. Please enjoy. <laughs> Skarlake nach, kurant papier, bakstien mir, neon nach, serene zonder het donker man. Nach na nach, mens na mens, donker nach, onverwacht, skari vergieren in elke een is uiteindelijk. Draai op je lichte kring Achterste voor 
performance wow we always say you definitely sang for your dinner so please come join us in the kitchen and let's see what bonnie and rosette and susie have for us tonight yes welcome guys that was a beautiful performance uh -huh. thank you guys come around this way come this closer come closer smells divine all right susie so yeah. what are the finishing touches that you just added right here really just take it straight out of the oven and a whole lot more parmigiano reggiano <laughs> Fantastic. You can never have enough. <laughs> too much cheese is never too much cheese. But Rosé, thank you so much for coming through. Thanks it was lovely to have you. We can't wait to see where else you'll pop up. I can't wait as well. <laughs> <laughs> the you rest can't of you. Exactly. <laughs> so, Bonnie, we're ready to dish up for amazing yes, guests. Yes, we are ready. Are you going to join us? Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. While Bonnie does that, a big, big thank you to each and every one of you for watching us right here on Afternoon Express on ACBC3. To all our fantastic guests, it's been such a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. From all of us yeah. right here in the loft, we'll see you guys again tomorrow, 4 p.m. on ACBC3. Good night. Cheers. Yum, yum. yum, yum. <laughs> tomorrow on Afternoon Express, we jump into the fast lane with South African racing legend Gugu Zulu. Actress and inspirational speaker Mariki Botma talks about her journey to success. There's a musical performance by Eugene Kutzer of Monarch. In the kitchen, we cook up delicious blueberry pancakes and combine them with chocolate balsamic sauce. Werner makes a mouth-wateringly refreshing mocktail and we take a look at the hottest films releasing at the box office this weekend. A never feel-good production. Join us next time for more fabulous fun inspired by First for Women on Afternoon Express. For an insurance quote, call 0861 11 or SMS FIRST to 49267.